Hello grade 10 learners! Have a nice day! Welcome back to my channel! For today's video, I'll be discussing to you how to determine the behavior of a graph of polynomial function relative to x-axis. After watching this video, you will be able to determine whether the graph crosses or is tangent to the x-axis. Now I'm going to discuss about multiplicity of a zero or a root. The multiplicity of a zero of a polynomial function is very helpful strategy to determine whether the graph crosses or is tangent to the x-axis at each x-intercept. Through the multiplicity, we have already an idea whether the graph crosses or is tangent to the x-axis. Multiplicity tells how many times a particular number is a zero or a root for the given polynomial. When the graph passes to a root of even multiplicity, take note, even multiplicity, then it is tangent to the x-axis. Another, when the graph passes to a root of odd multiplicity, then it crosses the x-axis. So there are two important points that you have to remember here. First, even multiplicity, tangent to the x-axis. Odd multiplicity, crosses the x-axis. Now let's have an example wherein we are going to determine the roots, its multiplicity, and behavior relative to x-axis at each root of y is equal to quantity of x plus 2 squared times quantity of x plus 1 cubed times quantity of x minus 1 to the power of 4 times quantity of x minus 2. If you have observed, the given function is in factored form. So if it is in factored form, it's very easy to determine the roots. But to those who find difficulty to get right away the roots, I'll be showing to you the detailed solution in finding the roots. Okay. Each factor will be equated with zero to solve for the roots. So we have here, for the first factor, which is quantity of x plus 2 squared, we have here x plus 2. Do not write anymore the exponent outside the grouping symbol because if we're going to expand this one, still we come up with the same answer. The only difference is that this factor will have the same root, which is negative 2, and it will appear twice. That's why its multiplicity is 2. Okay? So, 2 transpose to the right side, so it became negative 2. For the second factor, we have here x plus 1. Just copy x plus 1. And so for x, so 1 transpose, it became negative 1. For the third factor, x minus 1, so we have here transpose negative 1 and it became positive 1. For the last, x minus 2, transpose negative 2 and it became positive 2. So we have already the roots. Next, we have to determine the multiplicity of each root. Where are we going to base the multiplicity? We're going to base the multiplicity of each root to the exponent outside the grouping symbol of each factor. So for negative 2, since this is coming from this factor and its exponent here is 2, that's why our multiplicity here is 2. Okay? The multiplicity of negative 2 is 2. It's coming here. Negative 1 has a multiplicity of 3. 1 has a multiplicity of 4. And for 2, 
the multiplicity of 2 is 1. If you have observed here, quantity of x minus 2, there is no exponent outside, but it's already understood that the exponent here is 1. Okay, that is why the multiplicity of 2 is 1. After you determine the multiplicity of each root, this is now the time we're going to determine the characteristic of the multiplicity. Again, we're going to base to the multiplicity and not to the root. Okay. 2 is an even number. So since it's an even number, therefore it is tangent to the x-axis. Next, 3. 3 is an odd number. Therefore, it crosses to the x-axis. And for the root 1, with multiplicity of 4, it is an even number. 4 is an even number. Therefore, it is tangent to the x-axis. And for the last root, which is equal to 2, with multiplicity of 1, and 1 is an odd number, therefore it crosses to the x-axis. Always remember, even multiplicity, tangent, odd multiplicity, it crosses to the x-axis. Okay, this is the graph. Okay. Tangent, this is tangent to x-axis at negative 2. Okay, this is negative 2. Cross. Okay, once it, it is tangent, it will not cross the x-axis. It will just bounce back just like this. It bounces back. It will not cross. Okay, so at negative 2, tangent so it will bounce back then at negative one here it crosses so see it really crosses the x-axis and at positive one it is also tangent to x-axis it does not cross it bounce back also and last, at positive 2, our graph also crosses. Okay? That is how to interpret the concept of tangent and cross. Okay, looking at the function, if you have observed, the graph of our function is rising to the left here and rising to the right x to the power of 10 is the leading term of our function so if you will be given a factored form all you have to do is to determine the leading term okay because the leading term is very important how just multiply the, the first first term of every factor. So you have here x times x times x times x. Okay? Do not forget to add the exponent outside the grouping symbols. So you copy x and then here we have 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9. Here we have 1. So all in all the exponent is 10. That's why we have here x to the power of 10 as our leading coefficient. Again, if it is in factored form, to determine the leading term, just determine the first term. Multiply, okay? And add the exponents outside the parentheses. So, x, copy x, then we have here 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So, x to the power of 10 is the leading term. Way back to 
the behavior of a graph using the leading coefficient. If you can still remember my previous video, there are four cases. Okay, so in here, our leading coefficient with a symbol of a sub n is greater than zero. Why greater than zero? Because here, our leading coefficient is one. The numerical coefficient of x to the power of 10. Okay, that is our leading coefficient. And in here, n is even number. What is n? It is the degree. Our degree here is 10. And of course, 10 is an even number. If you can still remember the four cases, the, the behavior of our graph, the n behavior of our graph, using the leading coefficient test is that when the leading coefficient is greater than zero and the degree is an even number, then the graph rises to the left and to the right. So if you have observed, that's why our graph here is rising to the left and also rising to the right. Now, with regards to the turning points, okay, here we have five turning points. So let's count. This is the first turning point here. Okay, this one. This is the second turning point. This is the third turning point. Fourth turning point. And this is the fifth turning point. So there are five turning points of this graph. How to determine the turning point as a review because I also discussed this in my previous video. Okay, the turning point is at most n minus 1, where n is the degree. So in here, our degree is 10. So 10 minus 1 is equal to 9. So meaning the turning point for this graph is at most 9. So see, we have 5. We have at most 9. 5 is at most 9, meaning equal to 9 or less than to 9. Why we have here less than 9? It's because, as what I have told you, if there are roots with multiplicity, just like here we have multiple roots, then that's the time that our number of turning points is at most n minus 1. That's why we have here 5. And 5 is at most 9. Okay. Now let's have another example wherein you're going to determine the roots and its behavior relative to x axis even without looking at the graph. So we have here y is equal to x squared times the quantity of x minus 5 times the quantity of x plus 4. So first, we have to solve the roots, okay? If you are really good enough, and then even by just looking the factored form, you can easily solve the roots, and then good for you. But for those who are not that good, then we're going to have the solution. So we have here three factors. The first factor is x squared. Equate x squared with 0 and solve for x. So of course, we have here x is equal to 0. How did we get x that is equal to 0? Of course, this is quadratic. So we are going to extract the root of its side of the equation. So square root of x squared is x and the square root of 0 is, of course, 0. But remember, the multiplicity is 2. Okay, next we have x minus 5, equate it with 0 and solve for x, so negative 5, transpose to the right side, it became positive 5. So we have now the second root, and the third is 
x plus 4 is equal to 0 and solve for x so we have here negative 4 this is now the third root okay after determining all the roots so i have made here a table of values okay for our first root we have 0 and then we have here 5 and negative 4 so the behavior of our graph for this root since the multiplicity of 0 is 2 okay it will be tangent to x axis then if you will be asked at what particular point tangent to x axis at 0 0 why 0 0 because our x here is 0 and since we solve for the x intercept that is understood that our y here is equal to 0 next at 5 so 5 has only one multiplicity and 1 is an odd number okay multiplicity of 5 is 1 and 1 is an odd number that's why it crosses the x-axis and if you will be asked at what particular point the point is 5 0 5 for the value of x and 0 for our y okay by the way for 0 the multiplicity of 0 is 2 and 2 is an even number okay that's why it is tangent to x-axis and the third root is negative 4 the same with 5 the multiplicity of negative 4 is also 1 and 1 is an odd number so therefore the graph crosses the x-axis at negative 4 0 always remember if the multiplicity is even it is tangent if the multiplicity is odd then it will cross the x-axis thank you so much for watching guys can you like and if you have questions regarding the video just write it in the comment box kindly share it to other students for them to learn or master the lesson and please don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos and turn on the bell for notifications thank you so much to all who have already subscribed to my channel before i end let me share to you one of the verses from the bible therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation second corinthians 5 verse 17 that's all for today and god bless you all